we are live. Hey, everyone. I I can never do the countdown right in my head. Hey, everyone. You, you, ever, you ever seen Wayne's World, uh, JD? Parts of it, yeah. Because there's that scene where the very similar thing happens, where they keep counting down to record the show because they're now in a studio and not like in their basement. So like five, four, three. And like, and they keep counting along because they don't know how to do that. I feel like that's me every time we start a show is what I'm getting at. I'm stupid. Hi, everyone. I'm Manuel. I'm stupid. Party totally on, understandable. Man. Party on, Garth. <laughs> hey, Pataku, what's up? It's going good. It's just, you know, Tuesday, really chill. Doing I right. Um, go and go and introduce yourself a little while I finish up these little posty thingies I'm making. Hello there, I am Fotaku. I am both a lover of pho and a lover of photography, and also just the biggest weave ever. So, yes, that is my intro. I sometimes cosplay, I sometimes also work at booths. Sometimes I just like to just chill with all the cool peeps and be here. It's fun. It can be fun. Yeah, and I'm Manuel, and I, uh, I, I, I do stuff. I do stuff at a, at a, at a site called A to J Connections that occasionally does bigger stuff. <laughs> and, yeah, and JD's around, and it's the end of anime. Are, are, you, are you sad, JD, seeing anime come to a close? Yes, I am. I actually am too. And real talk, I'm a little upset because um, I didn't expect Fanime to get so far away from me. Fanime being a convention I'm planning for this weekend, <laughs> so I feel like anime, as in the series of anime themed episodes for UPZ, um weren't quite as theme centric centric as I hoped they were going to be. Because believe it or not, I did I did have some planning in my head about this. But it kind of got to shit here and there because of uh anime bullshit. It's almost like someone did anime bullshit. You to delegate this stuff to him, but you didn't listen. I'm stupid. I should have just been like JD, come up with some topics and just go. Oops. I say that every next, week, manual. Next time you do that. <laughs> next time you do that. Let me pause this thingy and get everything going um but yeah if yeah if we're talking cons i recently became conflicted about going to one that i already have a ticket for which one that will be avox oh it's funny we'll, we'll table that for a second because i want to talk about them a lot later on for both good and bad yeah i kind of feel the same way it's oh, not so like it's not like I'm just going to spill tea without, like... Oh, yeah. Ooh, that's a good con to talk about. But, um, yeah, there's all these conventions coming up. Like I said, I'm getting ready for Fanime. We're doing three panels there. Um, mm -hmm. This Friday at 3, we're doing um, a 2D idol panel, like, uh, idol anime. And uh, it'll be interesting. I, um, technically... This is a panel that typically Molly writes and Molly does, but like I did it myself, even though it's similar content, it's the same topic. But like I, I just covered things I wanted to cover and I had to do a lot of anime watching, believe it or not. And uh, it's been interesting. And it actually made me think of some topics for tonight, which I'm gonna get to later, which we'll get to later on and like maybe change my view on some of them. But yeah, then on Sunday, we're doing Magical Girls at, I think, 2. And then at 7.30, we're doing, uh, or 7, we're doing um, J-Metal with Warren. J-Metal. Yeah. It'll be cool. Are you going to Fanime, uh, Josh? Um, I don't think I am. I didn't plan for it. But the FOMO is the only thing that would, like, cause me to make a surprise appearance. There's also, like, a friend that's saying I should go to Momocon and that they will help pay for me to go to Momocon. And I'm just also just kind of like... That sounds really cool, but then I'm also just kind of like, oh, like I wasn't really planning for anything at all during the weekend. Mm -hmm. Like I just got done with uh, just helping out with uh, Toy Mandala gifts. Um, they had a they have a store in uh, I think Beverly Hills or somewhere yeah. around that area, and um, I just helped out with that during the last con. It was really fun. Oh, yeah. But I'm also really tired. <laughs> I mean, if I had a chance to go to Momocon, I'm not going to lie. Um, I really want to go to Momocon. So I'm, I'm a little low-key 
uh, mildly jealous, I guess, on the nicer side and upset on the more negative side that both you and uh, JD are not going. JD, I didn't know it was the same weekend as Anime Boston Manual. I'm not going to lie. I didn't know it was the same weekend as Fanime either. So, <laughs> like, I guess it makes sense because a lot of these cons happen during holiday weekends. But still, I feel like they moved Momocon because I feel like I didn't ever... Because I, I, even though I never went to Momocon, I know of Momocon because of, like, the Peachy Parade people. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, it, it just blows my mind. Fun fact, though. Um, Megan from Peachy Parade is coming to Fanime. So, um, that's weird. I didn't even know about that. I was like, oh, that's how out of the loop I am with our with our old Peachy Parade pals. I should say the ex-Peachy Parade pals because they don't exist anymore. Mm, but, yeah. Um, uh, and Manuel? Uh, yes. Well, Anime Boston is generally like the end of March, start of April. Oh, okay. So I think it got pushed back due to COVID and rescheduling. Is Momocon always Momocon? I have no idea. I've never been. Momocon. Never been either. Which is kind of the part that makes it a little bit more tempting. Yeah. Well, maybe next year you both can stay at my place. One of you gets the couch, the other gets an air mattress. That's what I'm saying. It's like, now I'm going to be like, JD, we're... We're going to Momocon. <laughs> I'm going to see... Well, I know this is mildly off topic, but I want to see... Man, yeah, Manuel, let's just get going. We can talk about Momocon when we actually I'm talk already, about conventions. I'm already here. I'm already here. Manuel? Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, you know who's going to be there? It's funny, this is the only person I recognize so far. Is Saber Spark? You know, the, 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 the YouTuber? He talks about animation stuff. Um, and I think he was also one of the people who was at... That 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 fur con not fur convention the what the fuck was that Tumblr convention called the one that went Dashcon Dashcon yeah he was at Dashcon I believe because I think he was one of the people that everyone goes to and they want like you know first handy reports from it anyway anyway what's new with you Josh what have you been up to I think oh, we did this part already me. manual yeah you <laughs> did this part already he he worked at a con I didn't know you were I didn't know you you do like con thingies that's cool. Every now and then, this one was at Bakersfield Convention, which I tend oh, to yeah. get through in about roughly yeah, two hours. So I was like, yeah, this will be a cool way of like really extending my stay. And they actually paid me, so I was like, yay, I'm, co yeah, I'm cool yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about Back Anime was this week. I actually didn't know it was this weekend, because there, there's some other events that I thought that our photographer person was going to be there. But he went <laughs> to Back Anime, and I'm like, oh, it's, it's this weekend. Um, our friend Vic was at Back Anime, and I'm like... <laughs> Why does Wait. Vic still go to things? Oh, okay. Oh, that... I can tell you all about that. I can straight up tell you all about that. Um, well, because I. Well, what's up, JD? No, I was gonna say. Well, let's get into it. <laughs> well, the, the, uh, the first thing we're gonna get into, we are gonna get into a current convention because it is mad convention season right now, and it like it's not just it's not even just that some of the that it's summer and it is convention season, but also like like JD mentioned with Boston Anime Boston that it got pushed. <laughs> into like the stupid convention season and by stupid convention season, i mean when they all happen so yeah we're gonna well manuel that? i have something to tell you your new what? background looks really good in black and white what oh did, did you put me a boomer yes and then now comes the black and white filter god damn it I, I yay like <laughs> that's such a good filter i want to set up like this i have to get new carpet in soon so at one point at some point soon i'm gonna have to um take everything out obviously for the sake of carpet and so it gives me the excuse to have to like rearrange how everything is and i actually can't like build out where i have my computer set up right i mean i can but i just don't want to move this unless i need to because i have a really stupid old computer desk and uh well it's not it's just heavy so like now that i have to i'm just gonna move everything to an area where i can actually do that bullshit my background <laughs> i guess you still won't see it but i'll see it <laughs> anyway. anyway okay yeah back on conventions yeah um so wait what was this about vic oh vic Vignagna. Mm -hmm. um what's it called well I at the event it didn't really seem like there was any um drama or anything that had occurred. Uh the main uh people that were there were like Ash Ketchum's uh voice actress. Uh she likes to go to SAC anime and uh Bach anime, I think, or she normally likes to um make it to events by the organizer since he does both. And then there was um Mila Lee and um Vic, and then I think just because they kind of felt like, oh, 
Mila Lee and Vic McNagna are in like Vampire Night together. They try to get in contact with Ezra Weiss. And so he showed up also. <laughs> um, there wasn't really too much, if I want to say, in terms of like direct drama that we could correlate to it because like it was just funny because the second this came up, like I didn't know that there were still so many people that were like very hooked on the Vic McNagna train over if like, oh no, he's innocent and everything. And I'm just kind of like, didn't that guy lose his like defamation case? <laughs> like, I don't think anybody was actually charging the guy for like sex, like sexual crimes yeah, yeah. or anything like that. They were just like, no, we just yeah. want him out of our spaces. And so, um, yeah. So like, I, I just like, um, when I saw that, I was like already aware that this is probably going to happen because there was an emo night here in town. And that's where I went with people who were part of the event for um, Bach anime. Like it's people that are like within the Kern County area. And so when we went to go chill after the event um, for that, that emo night or whatever, uh, the uh, person who was in, responsible for talking about the guests that were going to arrive said, oh, we got Vic that's going, but I'm going to announce him later. I was like, really? That guy's been here like so many times. Plus <laughs> the stuff from 2019 was not really good. And then she said, well, he's kind of just coming but like he's not um he's not being paid by the organizer like apparently it's just a solid that he wanted to do for him and i was like i could have sworn that the organizer like put vic on blast like back when the shit was like actually going down um so it, that was just it it's just kind of like if there's a voice actor you're going to come along and there's still people who want to see him and if he's like literally like oh you don't have to worry about paying me and shit like that then I was just kind of like, well, I guess there's not really a way to avoid it. But I was saying, like, are you aware of like what could happen, especially because you're going to drop him like so close to when the event happens? And they were like, yeah, because like it's better to just kind of like have it happen near the end anyway. But I'm mean, like, there were like a lot of people who at the very beginning of that controversy were upset if they were going to an event with Vic. Like, to my knowledge, he's still the only person at AVOX who's not really like invited to that. <laughs> Wait, what? Okay, never mind. He's not invited. Keep going. No, no, he's no, he's not invited to it. He uh, and because there was this um, there was this big AVOX promotion at LA Comic Con where um, the the whole AVOX crew were there. Like, there was just this whole set area in the back of the uh, what's it called, voice actor area. It was strictly just an AVOX signing area, and they were trying to say, "Come to AVOX instead of Anime Expo." And it turns out that Vic McNogna was actually trying to be a part of that group and they said no we don't want you to be here and so he tried to just have his own spot at um la comic con and then la comic con was like no we don't want you here because of the uh just all the uh bad publicity that you can bring and so then vic went to some place i guess across the street supposedly during la comic con where he was just still hanging there but it was just like they they don't avox is not like vic mcnagna uh, Mila Lee is part of a Vox. Um, when I spoke with Ezra Weiss at L what's it called ALA, he said he was not part of a Vox, which I tripped out because I was just kind of like, oh, oh, that's surprising because I only knew of only one person who was not allowed to be a part of that. And he said, no, I would, I would like for them to reach out to me. And every time I run into Ezra, like. Dude seems to be really chill. He goes to like fan events and stuff. I saw him at the Jujutsu Kaisen thing. He wasn't he wasn't really a part of the event. He was just kind of chilling and stuff like that. So um like like yeah, um very notably it was just something where it was like you're you're purposely doing this because you know that you're gonna get backlash. So why bother with it? It'd be easier if he just wasn't there. But once again, he was free. And at the event, thankfully, there wasn't anything major that had happened. Um, I think even during panels, it didn't look like there was some crazy Vic Stan related things either. Um, so I want to say that I hope nothing really went down. Lest, like, I was at a booth, so I don't know if something really cringy happened at some point. But um, uh, overall, it, I'm thankful it did go okay, but of course, when it was announced, the actual, like, pages for the back anime thing was filled with both, <laughs> why the fuck is he here, and everyone's saying, like, Vic is, like, totally innocent, and, like, you know, it's only Kick Vic who's gonna ruin shit, and I'm just kind of like, listen, there was nobody from the opposing side that was making any fucking content oh, about God, this. 
What? I forgot I was muted. I was trying to. I was trying to. I was trying to. I was trying, to, I was trying not counter, but I was trying to add to what you were saying. Oh, who was like, it? Why is he talking over me? Oh, I'm <laughs> so was, sorry. Oh, well, we couldn't oh, tell because he also keeps the mask on, so we can't yeah. see his lips move. I was gonna say the one thing I was gonna say. Sorry, sorry, guys. Uh, I was gonna say that even though no no bullshit I saw that happened at back anime, it did start up the online trolls again. I guess because mm-hmm. you know they saw him and now he's yeah. in their minds again. Um, and I follow Mars Girl. Um, like ah, shit, I don't remember what the hell her real name is, but I follow Mars Girl. She she goes by that on YouTube. But is she's that also... Jamie Markey or is that some other person? No, uh, it's some other Jamie some Markey other goes by Marky Mark. Oh, okay. but spelled Thank like you. her name. It's mm-hmm. someone else. But they, they weren't implicated in any of the, the legal proceedings, but they were very close peripherally around to the whole thing. So, like, they got a ton of the flack. And I will say, uh, I feel so I feel so conflicted whenever I see Mars Girls and stuff because I get it. I get that all the Vic people just like to, like, go after her, like, a lot for some reason. But I think they also like to go after her because she replies. <laughs> well, she, like, it's... Well, it's part of, like, it, this is the other part of it that's very weird, because, like, obviously, if you feed the trolls, you're just going to get more of this vitriol, but, like, I, I think there was even, like, a um a Phil DeFranco episode recently where they just they just talk about, like, that engagement, like, there will be comedians who will make cringy-ass jokes or will make transphobic jokes when it's, like, in the year of our lore 2022, we have no more room for this, like... We can agree that we all probably sipped that Kool-Aid when we were younger, but like, you know, like we, we've grown as people where we're just kind of like, no, no, no. Like we, we understand that's not really funny anymore. Like even the Simpsons killed their um, Mr. Smithers, uh, what's it called, joke after so many years. Yeah. But he said, this just, you know, people are going to be like, oh, look, he made transphobic comments. I'm going to go and like see the special where I already have a pre- like design of what I'm already going to think of this because I knew that he was purposely doing that. It's negative publicity, which feeds into it. Mars girl, I'm pretty sure doesn't want to deal with any of those trolls, but this is like the way that engagement stays up and boosts that algorithm feed. So it's pretty much the trolls feed her. Um, And like, that's just kind of, you know, it just kind of sucks because like most of the people who do this have like the absolute garbage takes that exist and that it, it just it's terrible but like that's how algorithms kind of work for engagement like if they see it happening over and over again they're going to boost that crap by the way can you guys hear me yes but you are you. very soft but can, wait why am i soft i don't know you just sound low am i too low you can't, no, you no you're good hold on i can't raise you individually hold on Discord does not allow me to do that, so I'd have to put you in like two calls, and you wouldn't be able to hear do, each other. Do I sound any better? Oh shit! Yes, you sound yeah, you much sound. better now. Yeah, you brought the boom with that one. Okay, well, let me back the mic up a little because I did raise the gain a lot. Oh, I can hear myself finally on the show. Oops. So yeah, I, th- I think I have been talking just really quietly. Apparently, oops. Hopefully, I could like I could try to level that out on YouTube because on YouTube I could try to find where the, the lowest is and set it to that. So I'll just and then I'll gain that. So it'll sound like shit, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> anyway, Evil Asian um, says to flip your mic. I don't know exactly what that means. Flip it. <laughs> it's funny because like, I, um, whenever when. This is a mic I took from like a work thing I had a long ages ago, and this is the way we had it there. But that was because it was hanging on a thing from the ceiling. But anyway, I think she means backwards. I, I'm, I think this is the front, though, right? Right. I want um, you to test it if it the back is the actually the back. Yeah, I think this is. Okay. Uh... While he's doing that, uh, Fataku, uh, anything else about conventions you want to talk about? I'll talk sideways. I mean, it depends, I guess. That's like, since I was leading into AVOX a little bit with that mm-hmm. other discussion, I guess I'm going to AVOX because I'm a little conflicted. And that was only because with the release of the schedule recently. Oh, okay. So, so okay. So, you know what? We'll, we'll try to move on. If my audio just sounds like shit, then I'll try to fix it as we go. But, um, oh, okay. I, bro- I think I broke this. Um so for those who don't know, AVOX is the con that's happening um, during Anime Expo, and it's supposed to be kind of like in lieu of like the way Anime Expo treats its industry guests. Yeah, well, yep. more so the English 
uh, guests because when they bring the Japanese guests, they really go like they they give them the priority of the budget since they have to like fly them out and they have a very specific way of um how cons are run in Japan and they have to like respect how the Japanese guests want to be handled during the event. So it's uh it's very different and that leads to um uh what's it called they prioritize like their satisfaction with coming down because obviously you know good word of mouth leads to more guests from Japan being like yes I would totally like to go down to Anime Expo um and yeah but that's a separate thing though so mm-hmm. then there's just the way they treat their um uh, English voice cast and mainly the ones that are uh, based in America. Just or as you... a note, just as a note, I, <laughs> I don't know if you could. It does say back on the back, so I assume this is the front. I don't know if you could if that shows, but um, I don't know. JD, try to raise me on Discord to see if that fixes anything. But uh, okay. Other than other than that, I don't know what else to do. Yeah, well, manual, I heard uh... my. St- Oh, I uh, just realized I can't go into the Discord settings without messing up the video, so just keep moving. Oh. Oh, see, I sound fine now, don't I? Yeah, you're definitely louder now. No, I... I, Well, I don't know if turning my mic sideways helped, but I can hear myself on YouTube. I mean, YouTube. This is YouTube now, on Twitch. Okay. See, guys, it's 20 minutes in, and we started the show. Just, Just kidding. So, Avox... Avox is like like we already said, but what's weird? Avox is trying something new. Have you seen their? Have you seen what they're doing, Josh? It's like, it's weird. Oh, I saw the um the list for the uh, what's it called the schedule, which needed to have a lot of course correction really quickly. But um, uh, they decided that they're going to be using a like four different like it's not even a tier system. There's just four different colors that they have for the people that buy uh, what's it called their badges, and there's like you can get all access, which allows you to go to any panel at any time. But if you don't get their all access, which is going for about 160 you can buy a regular badge right now for 75 dollars i bought mine for 99 that's why i I feel a little i feel a little like i've never seen a convention do this wait they They dropped dropped prices price yeah no right now and the because of the time that the special is going for it's literally just going to end at the time that the con happens like it's very much like I feel like, so I went back to check, like, okay, I paid $99. Do I get any benefit to this? And from what I've noticed, not really. Because all of these badges are actually just for panels. One thing they Mm -hmm. had to correct on their page right away was they noticed that the exhibit hall was showing up for different times depending on what badge color you got. So everybody was like, hold up. Am I only allowed to be in the exhibit hall for two hours for like this time to this time? What if there's like a voice actor I want to see and I can't go and see them because I'm not able to be in the exhibit hall at the time that they're going to be. But apparently it was like, no, 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 you can be in the exhibit hall at any time. That was uh, they're saying that was an error on their part. Um, So anybody can be in the exhibit hall at any time. It doesn't matter what ticket you have or what time it says you're slated for. Um... Uh, because like you have to be in the exhibit halls where all the signatures are going to be outside of just booths. And, you know, that was the thing where everybody was going to be like, what if I can't be there at the right time? Instead, what's going to be offered is that very specific panels, and some of them are actually repeat panels from what I've seen, are going to be going on at different parts of the day. And you just need to have the right, like, ticket for how you want to do your schedule. So, like... There's some tickets that benefit you being there earlier. There's some that benefit you like being there later. Like I have a red ticket and there's like only one panel there at 10 a.m. <laughs> like most <laughs> of the other panels are like later in the evening. With I'm the sure, I'm pretty sure that the whole it was a mistake on our part about the convention convention and convention about the exhibit it's, hall. Yeah. It's just confused because I, I actually was really confused. I read because at first I went to the website. And I was like, this con is so confusing. So, and I remembered, hey, they sent us the press release. So I'll just go read that. 
So yeah. I went and read the press release, and I'm like, wait, you're o- even I thought that you're only allowed in the exhibit hall for two hours? Yeah, like it's very confusing, right? <laughs> so apparently, I think the idea was, and don't ask me if they thought they were going to have a ton of guests or if how they thought this would ever work logistically. I mean, ton of guests, a ton of attendees. Yeah. But the idea was that you would get these four groups, four different colored groups, mm-hmm. and almost like as if you were like a weird classroom, you would mm-hmm. be like, okay, class, everyone get up and move to room B, and then mm-hmm. you move in a circle. You know, until everyone did everything. And, and that's it, the way you described it. It even has a circle, like in the way that they have the rotation for like choosing the um the tickets. Like it I do see like what you're explaining right mm. there. Yeah. Um so it's, it's weird. Yeah. It's very weird. I just don't like that had to get clarified first. And then I was taking a look at the list, and this is where I'm torn. Because first thing, we got to get the good out of the way. We have to talk about, first, I want to talk about, like, why this is good for the voice actors. At Anime Expo, they were getting shitty deals, some of which, even when they were used to promote the con, would have to pay the convention for them to be at the, like, the the place where you do your autographs. And the autographs would be capped in tickets because they wanted to be sure that nobody was there for too long because they had to move them to different spots. Um, and. Uh, that like that sucks because then that means that you could be making just X amount of money for a really big event when other guests that they'll have like for the ones from Japan like they 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 don't have necessarily a cap on them sometimes they don't even have an autograph session like they're there for very specific things and so it's like no you're you're here you'll enjoy and like this is what's going to go down but like for the English cast they would very much just be using practices that are very outdated that make it seem kind of like why is it that the only thing you're justifying with us being here is a free badge but we still have to pay to be at the autograph booth and you're capping how many people i can have come down and that's just capping tickets for people going that doesn't mean they're all gonna buy shit it it blew my mind uh mind you i've known about this for a long time because it blew my mind that there was a point um, when I used to do stuff for conventions as well, but not like vending, I would help mm-hmm. out conventions. So like there was a point when I was able to get an industry badge for AX and this is before A to J connections. So I was like, oh, let me get an industry badge. And then I'm like, wait, you have to pay still? <laughs> and I don't remember the pricing. It's it's supposedly half off or some weird percentage off, but because you have, because you have to buy it so late, you miss the lowest price points. Yeah. So. I, I was paying more at the time. I don't know, I'm not sure how it works today, but at the time I was paying more than I could have got the badge for back in, like if I got it on Black Friday, for example. And this was long enough ago that you could still buy like a badge for AX and still enjoy things easily. So I was really annoyed by that. But it's so weird that like this convention that's trying to like do better. And I get, I'm sure they are. I don't want to say that they're doing wrong by the the voice actors in their thing. A box, by the way, but they're doing this weird. Like, who the hell's running this? Or why are they deciding? I mean, I know who's running it. But it's the people who do um, LA Comic Con. But it's like, why are they deciding that they're going to try this new crazy format? Well, um, the from what I've gathered, and this is just gathered because this is not fact. What I'm talking about is not like the situation with Vic and Dante. That was fact. But like um, <laughs> with uh, with this situation, we're getting sued, everyone. Anyways, keep going. <laughs> uh, like the problem. Hi, Guti. Welcome to the stream. Like the problem with this. Not problem. We're not a problem. We're talking about benefits and stuff for this for the voice yeah. actors. Um, the goal was is that they were going to have very unique panels to skip out the regular Q&A that would be occurring. And they wanted to really upsell that this will be an experience. They'll be getting some very unique panels. It'll be a very intimate show that you can probably enjoy more with the guests. Uh, But one thing that wasn't determined yet was like, well, how are the tickets going to work? Because they didn't really release all the details until just recently. It was just kind of like... And it's so expensive. Well, it's, it's not just that. Like, we'll get to the point where it gets really expensive because like... um. Because it was just kind of like, what if you just want to support the voice actors? Like at Abox, they were at the Abox booth area at LA Comic Con. 
they were promoting that if you paid like a hundred and sixty dollars for this special ticket you would be able to go into a room with all the voice actors that they had on that given day and you would like i guess you'd get something signed by them and so but like that's what they were offering but like here's the thing like from a marketing standpoint it was brilliant because all the guests especially after the pandemic now they were saying like no all the guests are worth you know payment and all yeah. that stuff so not just at la comic con but also anime pasadena ala they all had now this very centralized format where you would be paying like 30 dollar minimums or 40 give or take on the guests all the pops because pops were just very popular like after the pandemic <laughs> and stuff pops like that popular. yeah all pops now regardless as to who's signing are all 50 dollars um everybody is hey. a fifty dollar minimum for pop signature. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Back back up for a second. Yes. Are you talking about the autograph? Yes, the autograph. Autograph signature for a pop is fifty. Like let's you know how they say you can get a personal item for like thirty dollars and stuff like oh that? Or God. you can buy a print for forty, like all that. But pops specifically because of people who are more hold known on. to resell this shit. Yeah. Like all the events, Anime Pasadena, Anime Los Angeles, um, a the LA Comic Con, and all that. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. This was not a topic, and I do, I feel weird saying this, and I'm sure JD is going to be like, "Manual, shut up." But even I don't, Anime I, Impulse. I don't want to say. I almost don't want to say this, but I, I feel like I have to. Um, that's too much money. <laughs> it's not. No, it's, it's supposed to. The idea is that it's supposed to keep people who flip That's, things. You, I, I get it. I get it. If I, you're I get, like a person who is like, oh no, I love this. Like this is my my pop. You know that. It, like if I was lucky, I paid fourteen dollars for it when it was when it first came out. Um, but like like that that's the issue is that because there were for years and this wasn't even like those voice actors were saying this at first for years comic book cons were dealing with people buying random comics well, getting them that's a little different i mean like when, when when you get when you when you walk up to stan lee and you well rest in peace but when you walk up to stan lee and you get him i just, I just don't know comic authors sorry <laughs> when you walk up to stan lee and you get him to sign spider-man number one or whatever or amazing fantasy number one with what his issue was 15 and like, get him to sign Instead it 15 or 14 yeah whatever it's like i get it like that that it could be for you but more than likely you're gonna get that you're gonna go back to the table to, to the floor get that thing slapped into a slab and get and sell it sell it somewhere well, put it, it, it was but this wasn't even stan lee because stan lee's lines and everything like you did have to pay for that like just in general but when we're talking like just, other comic book artists like other old guys and stuff like that oh, who <laughs> no but people would buy like really cheap they buy their really cheap comics and stuff because not all of them were like necessarily like bangers or oh, something wow. but people would buy like really cheap comics at comic book cons they would notice who the guests were they would go and just have them sign because like some of these older guests like they're not stan lee they're not like even jack kirby like rest in peace if he mm -hmm. would have had the ability to live longer but like they weren't any of them where they could just say like no my signature is like actually worth so much but I've because always, i've always thought that like 20 and i know jd's probably like, Ugh. and I, I know you could charge whatever you want and it's like yes it, it, value is determined on what you're willing to pay and yeah. i guess i'm only willing to pay 20 bucks and even then i'm a little like I guess, but it's like no, it gets yeah. it can add up. So here's the thing at That's LA Comic, yeah. But That's here's sorry. the here's the thing. My voice acting friends and be all like, I, I wish I we were supposed to have yeah. a voice actor on. I wanted him on to now. I, I wish he was here so he could like yell at me for saying that you guys are charging too much. But keep going. John. Yeah, sorry. I'm sure. I, I know Kaylee's charging like forty at Avox. Are you fucking serious? No, no, no. We're, we'll get to that part in a sec because here was the <laughs> thing at the LA Comic Con. Oh yeah, I forgot. Remember, I said there was that one hundred and sixty dollars. The, yeah. the ticket, yeah, yeah. Because here's the thing: uh, all of the guests would be rotating normally. They all had their set mm -hmm. prices, um, but like, if you were at the end of the day, you were just guaranteed that all the guests who were there would be at the um, what's it called? They would be there. Like, you don't have to worry about the rotations or anything. They're all going to be in a room. You paid one hundred and sixty dollars. But like me and my friends, who weren't sure, one of our friends did buy the ticket. 
but we weren't sure if like what is what is guaranteed with this because they didn't say what it was they said there would be one item that signed but they also said you got this complimentary like poster to the event so it was like oh well like if it's just a poster like well then that's just a specific thing it's going to be a nice memorabilia but like there's people who want to get specific things signed well my friend went to the thing and he said dude it was the greatest value because already if you want to get five people's signature at the minimum you're looking at 150 dollars but 160 bucks for all the people they had there you could get anything you wanted one item from any particular person free si free signature so you could have just bashed and gone in there and been like oh i paid 100 I, I assume the guests are getting some sort of, i mean they they have to get paid for that through the con but that, mm -hmm. i would be so annoyed if i was the guest who had to give someone something for free. I, I like how i'm looking at this from both sides here i was just complaining that they were charging mm -hmm. too much and on the flip side i'm like if that was me i'm like where's my 40 bucks <laughs> yeah it's yeah. like so like so there's that situation where um because 160 is still like like you, you this wasn't like oh i paid 160 to go to the la comic con you still needed to buy your badge and then you needed to buy that 160 dollar ticket so like at that point logistically it's like oh i see what the incentive is here i pay this amount pretty exuberant but it's supposed to go to the voice actors and funding this bigger event but if I just go the other way, I'm going to be spending a lot of money. And that's just because they were trying to make sure that everybody just get paid like what they're worth because the voice actors in anime and video game contracts like that's it's bullshit. So like I mean, I agree. That like, part of the issue is like sorry to cut you off, but I, I wanna I wanted to mention something before we move on in a second. But I do agree that there is some contract bullshit. Like there's always talk about unionizing. I saw Kaiji Tang, I believe that's his name. Yeah. Um, it's mainly I'm not sure if that's the one who said it, but I'm pretty sure it was him because uh I I met him at ninja con ages ago but anyways he tweeted about it how crazy it is that like there's sometimes he comes to conventions and like he, he sees all these fans who know him and he feels really cool and then he goes back home and like eats his cold beefaroni or some shit like that like you know like from the can uh, yeah. and i'm just like man the struggle's real so I, I i feel bad even saying this but i just can't believe how much autographs cost i'm sorry i just can't get over this no, and no it's JD's right. I, I did look on Kaylee. I, I found an old link to one of Kaylee's streams, and she was charging like forty or fifty for like signing things live. And I'm like, my God, that's a lot of money. Uh, I believe that included like a charity donation and oh, well, I mean, also, and personalized I note bad. and stuff. I feel bad. Like now I well, feel that... like a monster. Hold on, real fast. Uh, Kaylee came to one of our. our for those who don't know, Kaylee's a friend of the uh, of Ada J. Kaylee Kaylee Mills. Friend of, Kaylee Mills. Yeah, she's a friend of Molly's as well. But like she came to our, she came to something that we were at, and a friend of mine wanted to get him to sign something at the con and wasn't able to. And I'm like, oh, well, you? I didn't say like, oh, you know. But I'm like, oh, by chance they're coming. Just have her sign it like in our room. And I, and she did. <laughs> but now in my head, I'm like, I think I screwed her out of like forty bucks. <laughs> uh, well, it, it normally that's... it it depends on what the situation is yeah, though I mean, because it's been free because I, I know some cons it's like and this is another thing that, a, that the, the the guests complained about ax is that um i think if you're a guest of honor it's in your contract or it could be in your contract that when you do an autograph session you can't charge like for so many like so uh so maybe kaylee's autographs are free at this convention but i still feel like i screwed her now oops well like it it, it, everything just kind of depends with like how it plays out because like that was the situation where it's just kind of like hey you guys did like an interview thing it was just more like you know solid type of deal you get me oh yeah um that's why i'm saying like there's certain times where like it'll just be like oh it's still cool to like do this for free but like uh, one big thing that happened during the pandemic was since a lot of the voice actors also dealing with like not being able to work because studios needed to like oh. change up you know to prepare to have people come back and so some people who had a home studio already they could still continue to work, but other people didn't. So what they would do is they try to find artists that they said who makes great, um, who great, who makes great prints. And I want to do a, a signing stream, and that's like that was what they did. So that way they could still be afloat and make some money from the uh, fans that they had who want to support them during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So this is all going on this is like this is all just literally the best opportunity they had so going forward with cons it's like yes you can now justify that change on a big scale and 
It was. Sorry, I'm laughing. It's like it's not Bob Paycheck and the Genie app. It's not meant to be like that. That's a straight up cash grab that makes you need to pay ten fucking dollars per ride. And like, it, this is different. Okay, it's not. It's not that. Recognize they're not the Genie app. The Genie app is stealing your money. It is stealing your money. They literally did Fast Pass free for years. And the pandemic was the best excuse for them to like sleep in the Genie app and try to. There's a whole YouTube video on. Um, I'm sure everyone's seen it. If you're into like Disneyland, there's a whole YouTube video on the Fast Pass program, which is great because it price marked like how basically you're getting really fucked over with all this. Anyways, Disney. Yeah, Disney's like, yeah. Disney, I, I, Disney is the uh, AX. I mean, AX is the Disney <laughs> of anime cons. Is what I was trying to say. Yeah. Um, okay. So, Hold on. yeah, we've been on this for a while, so Emmanuel, closing thoughts on this topic? Yeah. Oh, gas charged way more than I thought. And yes, it was a copy of River City Girls. I just realized, I because on desktop, I'm signed into A to J. I replied as A to J to myself, but it wasn't myself, it was JD, but yeah. yeah. Uh, I just wanted to, like, go on there because I was trying to, to defend the voice acting for this, but I mm-hmm. will now, 100%, I'm still a consumer, though. Um, the part that does suck, though, is I thought that with me paying the price I was paying or something, maybe oh, you Avox get special. Yeah, like I thought Avox, like I thought part of it would be if you pay for this event, you know, because we're gonna have all the voice actors who are giving the bird to Anime Expo, is that maybe signatures here, like here specifically, will like maybe you get one free signature or something. Yeah. But I mean after... adopter, you can get like one of those cool little Nintendo badges. But yeah, they didn't do nothing for you, did they? No, I because I only pay for a badge. I only got the thing. You could now pay for a cheaper price than what I paid for. I went back to double check if like because I paid 99, do I get anything special? And currently, it looks like it's a no. It's just you whatever the I'll I am going to like get in contact just in case, but like now the signatures, it doesn't matter if you get any of the colors or the all access pass. You still need to pay for signatures. They are still going for like that base 30 and like depending on who it is. And I'm just a little, I'm just personally a little bummed out because like I would have thought that buying into this event would have been perfect for you to just be kind of like, here's a very expensive badge for one day, you know, um, might as well be able to get like the most for it. And now, like, even the All Access, which is also $160, that only gives you All Access to just go into any panel room at any time that yeah. you want. It's not giving you that opportunity to also get the, to my, at least to my knowledge, based on what it says on their website, to, like, go and get a free signature. And to me, here's, like, I feel like it sucks, but I'm also a person who's been very fortunate to go to a bunch of, like, small events where, like, you used to be able to get crazy signatures for, like, 30 bucks like on a doki con you had a shit ton of guests and stuff like that 30 I bucks don't... was like but, and like, some of them anyways so they were free but like yeah but like persona events like in california where all the voice actors are just chilling in little tokyo and people can be kind of like yo hey what's up and stuff like that there's like so much that occurs where if you're like the kind of person who wants to meet that person right away this is your best opportunity because they'll literally be in one spot but yeah. It, it is pricey if you've literally had the opportunity to see them at different events over the years, and that's the part that sucks. Yeah, we'll leave it there. But I, but like I think this is the big point that we're trying to get, and we meandered through it because I was I'm still just flabbergasted at autograph prices. I am shocked. But, um, but I think the big the big takeaway is that it, it's. It's hard to support when the cons. It's just the first year con, and it's messy. But it, it, it's expensive. It's an expensive mess to get involved with. But let's move on a bit to um. Well, it's a good topic. I wanted to bring up our dub versus sub debate because, believe it or not, I've switched a lot in my dub versus sub arguments. Um. Uh. But oh my god, I'm sorry. Forty dollars. <laughs> Manual, come on, we we close this topic. You know how much money. Anyway, oh my God, we're, we're interviewing some voice actors. I won't say who, just in case this doesn't happen. But you can look at follow us, Energy Connections. Um, 
at Fanime, and now I'm just like, <laughs> we get all the autographs people when we do interviews at the end. I'm like, should I sell it on eBay? Okay, that would be unethical. But I'm just. <laughs> I'm yes, like, <laughs> that is part of the problem. That is the problem. It's like you were given that for free because they thought that was cool. Unless unless they thought, no, this is an interview thing. We already see where this is coming. They might do a giveaway or or something. If we do a know. giveaway, we'll tell them. <laughs> but anyway, and it's funny because I still have I should give it away like on a random show. I still have a lady beard giveaway uh autograph for it because we used to do we used to do well, we haven't because the pandemic, but we used to do a lot of like, giveaways earlier on, like before obviously, the before times. And um, I would even like I would do it mostly myself. I think a couple times if somebody got it from somebody, one of our people in Texas got it, they ship it from Texas. But like I would ship it myself, and someone just never gave me their address. Like somebody who won it, so I still have a Lady Beard autograph board. So if anyone wants one, I'll, I should I should auction off all the unclaimed prizes I still have lying around because I'm like I feel weird throwing them away, and I definitely shouldn't sell them. But anyway, anyway, dub versus sub. JD, what what do you prefer? I mean, I watch mostly subs, but I do like uh, some dubs. Like, I think they both have their pros and cons, and it's just come down to a matter of preference and what you need. Uh, because we had this discussion about two years ago. I have a link to it before. Before, before I before I asked uh, for Taco's opinion, um, I wanted to point out that when we had this topic, like it was even before JD's time. I think it's like way a long time ago. Um, the, the, the thing that me and Yaru came about to, uh, and I think someone else is on, but I forget who it was off the top of my head. I want to say it was Ren that we decided that like pretty much all dubs are bad <laughs> inherently, not necessarily because of quality, but just inherently because of like, you know, altering the original work. You know what I mean? And I, I I've definitely changed. I've definitely changed over the, in the interim, but watching a lot of anime recently has changed me even more. Josh, dub versus sub. Oh. Manuel, before we get to Josh's answer, I yes. agree we should all just read the Divine Comedy in the original Italian. <laughs> Screw the, the English the, translations of anything. The, the way before that, English. you know, Dante Alighieri in, uh, meant it. That's his yes. name, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the way he, he intended it. <laughs> um, dub versus sub, Josh. I like dub. See, now, I used to really not like dubs, and it's for a couple reasons. Um, one, I, I've all, and I'll admit this is a stupid reason. It's been a stupid reason for a while because I, I've, I should say I've had the joy of being friends with a lot of voice actors who've like come up, so to speak. Um, so like hearing Kira Buckland, hearing Kaylee Mills, hearing actually those two I can think of the top of my head, but there's definitely. Okay, Manuel, that stuff name dropping. Um, Hearing them, it, it's weird because it takes me out of it takes me out of whatever it is. I'm like, is that Kaylee, Kira? You know, um, uh, Kira's actually a lot better at like kind of hiding a voice. And it's funny because Kaylee, I don't think uses her like real voice very often, but I could tell her like acting voice enough that I'm like, oh, that's Kaylee. And I'll look it up, and sure enough, it's Kaylee. Like, um, I, I was playing this game that I was reviewing for A to Day earlier on in the year called Crystar, and. Kaylee was one of the main um, characters. She played one of the main characters. Actually, Kira was in that game too, I think. And one of the people we're interviewing at Fanime was in that game also. But uh, I was like, "Is this Kaylee?" And it was Kaylee. So it's weird. And and that leads me to my big point about dubs is that I feel that there's a much smaller pool to pull from. That sounded weird, but you know what I mean. I feel like there's a much shallower pool of voice actors to pull from. Um, so you hear a lot more repeated actors, whereas you don't see that. I mean, you definitely see it, but you don't see it as much in the original dubs. At least I feel so. Also, there's the whole thing about re recasting characters, which apparently is also an issue that the voice actors themselves have talked about. Mm -hmm. It's weird because I feel like they never talked about that before, but I remember seeing that a lot recently. No, <laughs> they, they've definitely talked about it. As uh, One that gets especially weird now is uh, Teasing Master Takagi-san. Because Funimation licensed the first season and they had their cast, then Netflix uh, cast or licensed season two and had their own cast, which had Kaylee as Takagi-san, and then Sentai licensed season three and they mostly brought back the Funimation cast. Oh wait, so Kaylee's involved in this nonsense? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Manuel, there are definitely cases where they have recast Japanese voices, 
generally when they're either remaking the series after a while, like uh, Sailor Moon and Sailor Moon Crystal. Uh, I think the only voice actor they shared was uh, Kotono Mitsuishi. I, I can't, the main voice actors, actress for Sailor Moon was the that's only one. A little, that's a little different. And I don't mean to say, like, oh, that excuses it. Um, but what I mean to say is, if it's a reboot or whatever, I get it. But, like, what you described earlier is, like, an ongoing show. And I do yeah. know for a fact, um, and I keep repeating this one because only when I ever know off the top of my head, but I know it's happened other times. But I know for a fact that, like, um, Dirty Pair, the original Dirty Pair, the reason we got Dirty Pair Flash, which was, like, the reboot OVA in the 90s, and why we haven't seen much Dirty Pair since, is because one of the voice actresses retired or something So like, in Japan. So, like they never continue to the series because it's like, oh yeah, we can't do it without them. But I'm sure if that was in the US, it's like, oh yeah, there's fucking 15 people who played Piccolo. I think there's like five. But still, somebody corrected me on that on YouTube one time because I always say there's like a dozen. But but um, but there, there's shit like that where it's insane. And even shows like, I remember when I was younger, I used to like the show called Sayuki. Um, mm-hmm. It's Journey to the West, but like, you know, anime boys. And yeah. um. I think there were three seasons to that. And I think one was like ADV and like one was Genion or some shit like that. Or like whoever the fuck was around back then. Maybe it was Funimation. And there were, and then there was a movie, I think. And there was three separate dub class, or at the very least there was two. And then there was a third one that had changes. And mm-hmm. it was insane. I'm like, what the fuck? Saber Marionette J, I think that was the name of that show. Um, that also had, some people were like from anime work. Some people were from um, Genion or Pioneer. And that had different dubs. I don't know. It just annoys me. It annoys me. Mm-hmm. Josh, your thoughts on dub versus sub? Um, well, you know, I was. Uh, oh, I, I never got positive. Oops, I'm gonna I'm gonna get positive yeah. after this. <laughs> well, I I watched dubs when I was young. I started watching more of the Japanese just because um that or subtitles because that was available online more often. Um, and then afterwards, I just kind of slipped back into dub because it was just kind of like I, I get that we're going to lose material in translation and they can't always be like school rumble where they'll bother at least to actually put context if you're watching it in the dub versus the sub and even when you're watching sub they'll still say like oh if you're not familiar with what this joke means or anything like this this is just wordplay and stuff like that or here's a bigger reference with context mm-hmm. um but o- over time, I could this this could be my boomer moment now. But like, <laughs> I, I just felt like um, over time, it's just kind of like the the dubs have been getting better. They've been trying to follow it a- as closely as they can. Every now and then, they're still gonna muffle something up or try to like justify what they said in that moment with something different, or if they feel that in the West it's gonna hit different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, I want to say that we're like in a much better place. Um, yeah. So, like, whether or not you're watching sub or dub, I feel that I'm I'm grateful that the everything's trying to go to like a better position where it's a little bit more professional with how they handle things. Uh, to our detriment, we'll never get another ghost stories again. I feel, but you know, it's just. Uh... Oh, by the way, did you know? Like, it's funny. Because... See Manuel's presentation on ghost yeah. stories from DTL number something something. He'll put it the link right up here I, I will, I'm I will not on camera, link. so you can't see me where I'm pointing. Uh, uh, up there somewhere yeah i'll put a link i did the whole thing on on, on ghost stories it's great um by the way do we do we not like greg aries is he okay does anyone have any opinion uh, on him i, I think actually he's don't okay. know who I, greg aries is i don't think he's done anything why okay good well i mean no nobody has a strong opinion because i'm about to say like, I, I can't I, i'll admit i like I'll him admit, he, he was a uh, koyuki and uh back mongolian chapter cut one of my top five favorite anime oops well you're probably gonna like me after this so um, he was one of the personal reasons I never liked dubs when I was uh, getting into anime, like in the early 2000s. Not early, but because I don't think he was acting that long ago, but like right before the 2010s ish, around that time. Um, and because he was in so much shit, and I, I'm sorry, Greg Aries, I'm sure you're an excellent person. I'm sure you're great. Um, thank you for your contributions. But I fucking could not stand his voice, and like he always had this same kind of like. I don't know how this. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> I keep wanting to say the word annoying, but I don't want to use that word. <laughs> His voice annoyed me, <laughs> and it, it, he was in a lot of shit. And I'll never forget, like whenever I would hear his voice, nothing would get me to switch to the dub. Tra- I mean, to the subtrack more than that. 
like I remember specifically there was a show I, I remember watching called Heaven's Lost Property, which is just a typical big titty anime girl. Yeah, I was about to say, Manuel, do you want to admit to that on this stream? It was a terrible show, but uh, but the reason I bring up that show in particular is because it was one of the first anime I'd ever bought on Blu-ray. And by the way, the reason I owned that show at all and was watching it was because I found the Blu-ray on clearance at a store, so maybe that tells you something. But I had it was one of my first anime Blu-rays. And if you've never used a Blu-ray before, because I know some people never really adopted that weirdly including myself i guess but um it's a little more difficult to get to like the menu it's not like a dvd menu it'll pop up a sub menu onto what you're already watching and i was trying my hardest to get that fucking greg every voice to stop <laughs> and, I could not, and like in my boomer way i was just like i need to turn off his voice how the fuck do i turn off his voice <laughs> anyway yeah, that, that's my that's my heaven's lost property story <laughs> yeah big titty anime <laughs> But I will say that um, similar to Josh's boomer thing, my boomer thing is that now it's funny because I don't, I definitely don't feel that I have a problem reading subtitles. I don't, but there are times where I don't want to invest that much of my time with what I'm watching. Does that make sense? So, yes. So like I live on dubs now and it kind of bothered me that when I was doing a lot of my research for that idol anime thing, how few anime have, oh, okay, let me rephrase that how some anime i was researching did not have dubs like i caught to is a perfect example i fucking love that show and i wanted to watch as much of it as i could but i literally couldn't because sure i know i know a decent amount of japanese now no way fluent but i know enough that i could probably skim along and uh make my weep self from like 10 years ago jealous but not the same way as if it was a dub track i could put on the background look at every so often you know not have to stare at constantly you know what i mean put it on the mm -hmm. side screen so that that's I mean, my uh, that's my best thing for for dubs was that licensed in the u.s no of course not i caught okay. through like 500 episodes <laughs> across like three or four seasons and like it, i don't think it i don't think anyone likes the show quality i do but most people just know that and most people watch it like little girls so they could like buy the toys you know okay and yeah that, and that was probably part of your problem <laughs> <laughs> uh actually and going Man back to something uh manual watches shows with little girls everyone get that out there anyways uh going back to something josh was saying about like uh, i guess faithfulness at times uh yeah i definitely prefer getting the intention of or like the impact of what's being said uh over what is like literally being said and, and especially this can uh happen a lot in like comedy stuff where timing and references and jokes will just change between uh, or may not work in one culture as well. So it kind of is like, okay, we changed up the joke, but it makes people laugh and it kind of gets the same point across. And Especially so if it's wordplay. It does depend because, you know, um, like that's something where they definitely want to preserve it in any way they can when localizing. Mm -hmm. But I, I do agree. Like you're, you're, you are losing the greater context of, what that scene originally was meant for when it came out in the medium that it was orig originally supposed to be in. Um, and, and I think it's really hard because it's like, we don't know what's the best way to move from it because if we were to just straight translate each thing, it w it just doesn't make sense because there's layers to it where you, you'll you need to have it. Sometimes you don't have enough space either above or below the screen to add those extra subtitles to say why this is important. Sometimes they'll drop shit that's like very historical in its context. Oh yeah. And you know, like that that is a bummer because I think the greater thing we want to do in that argument is not feed ignorance. Um, there's a there's a friend of mine who translates for manga and she was saying, and by the way, she was saying this on Twitter, but like we've actually talked about this personally because she's like she's huge on both sides of the argument about people who translate who who localize too much and people who translate too literally. But anyways, mm -hmm. um she was saying, um, I probably shouldn't say what manga was, but she was saying that obviously the publisher decided they weren't going to use honorifics in the translations, like you know, San, Chan, Kun, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they didn't, but they but and they're 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 running this long running like kind of like slice of life love type series or whatever, and at some point one of the characters, uh, the main character stop using stops using San at the end of the girl's name, mm -hmm. and she gets all like excited and say, like, "Oh my god!" And then like, um, 
I guess she doesn't really read the manga, so nobody really knew that this was going to happen. So it was like, wait, what do we do now? Like, how do we explain this? And so, like, they had to create a nickname for the character. And, like, they okayed it with the author, but they had to create a nickname for the character. And that nickname only exists in the English translation now because they they didn't think... And I, I get why they did it. But, yeah, shit like that always... It's, uh, like, you kind of lose something if you don't... If you don't it's hard. Just learn Japanese. I mean, Everyone just learn Japanese. I, I can definitely see that. And I probably would have brought up something doing that as a okay example of uh, what I what I prefer. Just because I, I, it I'm does kind of like, translate or uh, transform it into the American thing, where you might address someone by like their name, like just their full name, and but as you get closer to them, you might come up with a nickname for them, or like either from some kind of in joke or something, that kind of stuff. And it shows that yes, these two have kind of grown closer. Or these that person perceives it this way. Hey, fuckface. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no. Um, and to be fair, I I don't think I ever thought that. And I'll be real. I don't know if this is a. I, I can't say this for everyone, but I'm I'm okay to admit it. Part of my sub versus dub problem when I was younger was definitely a very weeby thing like a very like japanophile thing where it was all like i know we said this earlier but it was real where i was like it's japanese you need to leave it in japanese you know and it's like what the fuck are you doing it's like we don't, we don't need to hear this like i need to absorb all the nihongos i can kind of thing you know you know how that is yeah <laughs> no sure like i was... had my face <laughs> yeah but it was to not be because we were in that phase because we didn't want to be like how we were prior, you know, where all we had was English dub. So, you know, we're like very getting into it. So we're going to pronounce shit wrong. And then it's like you, you get to this point where you're just kind of like, yeah, I just want to get only the sub. Uh, I only want this to be like as legit to that. But I feel that that's I feel at that point in time. It's because we're trying to not be something that we were before. And I think the thing we didn't want to be is like ignorant more than anything. We didn't want to be ignorant. We didn't want to be like dumb or unaware. And I think that's that's just kind of harsh. That's why we're always going to have the weebs making fun of weebs memes and stuff like that. Yeah. Because, um, you know, like <laughs> I, I think it comes to a point where when we get to a point where we're chill, like it'll either happen where we're just kind of chilled out and maybe we're okay, but there'll be people who are just kind of like, well, no, I feel that the voice actors in the English camp sometimes really put in like a good job. And then you'll have the people who are always just say, no, going sub is technically the best way to go. And sometimes you'll go into a deeper end where even the sub isn't good enough because sometimes they'll depend on who does subs that they'll say, no, it's better to just learn Japanese. And then you'll just straight up get it. And to which I'll say, that's probably the best way. But like, if you're really going to be immersed in that product, it's not just learning the language. Like, freaking Joey from Trash Taste, like, learned, like, still constantly likes to learn more about Japanese and everything. But it's, because it's not just about the language. It's not just about the kanji. There's literal subtext within, like, the Japanese culture, like, the, the way that they have their own versions of like puns or the jokes that come from the wordplay. And some of that is even rooted in the history of Japan. So it's like, there. I mean, it's there's not... a lot of shit. Yeah. It's funny. It's funny. Cause I remember like, I, I, I took a lot of Japanese and I was in, I actually have a, I actually have an associate. By the way, it's not, I never went further with that. I should have, but like I have an associate in Japanese. I never like did anything with, but, um, but I took a, in one of my, conversation classes they mentioned some of the weird word stuff that nobody ever thinks about like you know how if you go to j1 they're going to teach you like uh tabaru and uh, what, what the fuck's the drink one nomu nomu um and that's eat and drink right but it's not it's not um tabaru uh, is actually to ingest something with your teeth and nomu more specifically is to ingest something not with your teeth like technically if you're if you eat soup i guess that makes more sense you're drinking soup but if you eat stuff like pudding or like jello maybe um you would you would typically want to use nomu like and for example snakes they never eat anything with they always swallow so they're always nomoing <laughs> i've mentioned this before but it still blows my mind that i never knew that until like i took that class and nobody talks about that, and I guess the Japanese do. <laughs> but yeah, apparently that's one of the easier ways to like pretend you're better at Japanese if you know the difference. 
So I just taught everyone yeah, something. Actually, actually, thank like, me. Once again, going off what uh, Josh was saying, yeah, I think uh, definitely some part of it for the people who just completely rejected Dove was that some people just always want to have some reason to feel superior to like some I other think, group. They, I, 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 I meant that not ironically. I meant like me, yeah, but especially yeah, then. like uh, oh. There's that episode of Fairly Odd Parents. It's not anime, but like where he wishes everyone was basically the same and they're just all gray blobs. And yeah. then like the other two people are just saying, yeah, but we're the grayest and the blobbiest. Like, yeah, some people are just always going to have that need to yeah. feel superior to some other in some but, just like small way just because that's what makes them I've tick. Never seen, okay. I've never seen that, but that's definitely me. I am the grayest and the blobbiest blob you've ever seen. <laughs> It's funny because it's true. It's, anyway. a, it's a really good comparison for what he brought up. Not not that you're a great blob. I don't know where I'm pointing. But uh, what's it called? <laughs> um, just, uh, you know, I, I saw that episode. That's like a really OG episode. Like, <laughs> <laughs> It's funny because the movie mildly segue from there. Because one of the other topics I want to talk about, like, we'll, we'll try to rapid fire these so we can get them all in before we have to wrap. Is uh, I wanted. By the way, I didn't even say this earlier because we had all those sound issues. I kept forgetting to bring it up. Is I the, the whole point for this last anime episode? Sorry for that long convention thing. It's still anime related, but like I wanted to revisit our old thoughts on things and just re-examine them because we haven't had, I think, as many topical episodes like about controversial things. Because back in the day, it was like let's tell our trash opinions and get everyone mad at us, and we don't do that as often. For for the better, because Goody in the chat's like, oh no. Yeah, we're back. back. Oh, we're back? Okay, we're back. Oops. We're back. Okay, we're back. So, we'll just continue. Sorry about that. Internet crapped. Um, but, hi, Guardian Spice. That was just the whole thing. That Basically, that, that show was um, whatever. There's but, an echo. Uh, is there? Let me double check. Oh, it's my end. Sorry. It, okay. it came from my end. It's all good. Um, but, hi, Guardian Spice, you were saying? I didn't want to talk about that too much. I, I was going to say, like, sorry if I offended you for saying that was too much like Steven Universe. Now that I look at the art again, it really isn't. Oops, I'm just stupid. But I did want to talk about more specifically, like, um, especially when I was getting into anime a lot, like shows like, okay, actually the perfect example is Avatar. Because, like, uh, you, you could talk about Teen Titans, and I feel like that's a little more borderline because you have, like, Hi Hi Puffy on Miyumi doing the theme song. and uh, And it's funny because I don't think JD was here for this episode that we did. It was a long time ago. But somebody in our chat, or maybe it was YouTube, had a really good point that I've since just kind of stolen and repeated that a lot of the animation, the in-between animation, is kind of all still done in the same place, usually somewhere in Southeast Asia. <laughs> so <laughs> technically, almost all animation, if, if that's your barometer about where it's being created, a lot of it would just be considered anime. And if you live in Japan, everything's considered anime because it's animation. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> Have you ever thought of a non-anime shows being called anime, uh, Josh? Mm, Ruby. Okay. I actually don't like Ruby at all. <laughs> I can't. And it's funny because, like, where's Callie? Somebody get Callie because Callie was, uh, actually, I shouldn't say that. Oops, yeah, don't, didn't don't say her name again, Manuel. I... Summoner. <laughs> bleep, 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 bleep. I never said that. Anyways, um, there's some people have very strong opinions on Ruby. I won't say anything else besides that. But I hate Ruby. I, I never liked Ruby. Uh, um, do you like Ruby, Josh? Yeah, I do. I really do. I want to say it's definitely wavered over time because uh, I mean, I don't always want to go back and say like, unfortunately, due to the loss of oh. um, Monty uh, Monty Ohm, that that's why the show dipped. I feel like that's a very easy. I feel like it's too easy of a cop out because okay. like Monty was having a lot of friction with Rooster Teeth while he worked on the first two seasons. But well, it's funny because once again, I'm, I'm sure Monty was a great person. I rest in peace. I don't really know any of his work to be honest. I think did, was he the one with the red versus blue? Or was that just Rooster Teeth? Anyway, no. Uh, well, it was just Rooster Teeth at first, and later he joined in for like oh, a few okay. of the later episodes where he helped out with animation. But he essentially did the. Uh, the Haloid thing and Dead Fantasy. Um, and so this was something that Rooster Chief was like paying it. But either way, I like it because, you know, it's um, what's it called? It, the emphasis was female cast, hunters, it's his fluid animation. Everybody looks hella stylish, guns. Um, 
Never mind. Forget guns. Um, what's it called? Um, it's, it's funny because size. my issue, my issue was that it was a, uh, it was way too fight centric in the early seasons. That's the point, though. <laughs> It's funny because yeah, it's funny because I've said that before. And people said the exact same thing to me. It's like, yeah. do you not know his style? Because apparently that was what he did. He did like these elaborate fight scenes, and I'm like, I'm sorry. It's like I want more plot. So it's funny yeah. because I think that it's the exact opposite issue I have with some of the quote unquote like, well, I'm not calling myself a fan at all, but like with the real fans because real fans don't like the newer stuff. I think because it's too plot heavy. But I'm like, oh, finally there's plot, <laughs> and that's yeah. kind of where I'm like, okay, it gets a little better now. <laughs> Uh, can I weigh in for a second before we? Yes. We, yeah, I say uh, to what Manuel was saying. I was like, yeah, that's the whole point. I say, yes, you can completely understand the point and still not like it. <laughs> it's nothing but fights. <laughs> it's so I, I and like it's good animation. Don't get me wrong; it's great animation, even. But I feel like, I, and to a degree, I think that's kind of Rooster Teeth's charm. But I feel like I was watching a really 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 well done youtube short and like like a proof of concept if the, you know as opposed to a show because there wasn't any plot <laughs> at least there wasn't much plot i don't know maybe that maybe i'm just in the minority i'm sure i am in the minority <laughs> also i will say that ruby ruby gets the top award for me for all the friends who had cosplayed from it and i assumed it was an anime until i finally saw it and by anime in this context, I mean made in Japan. But well, I don't know. It, that's, that's it's a uh, it's gone a, a a manga. It's uh, shown up in uh, what's it called uh, the Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle with like. That doesn't say. The problem is with shit like that, and I mean shit in the general sense. Not that I'm calling it shit. The problem is the problem. The thing is. That especially with Ruby, I think that I'm just like, yeah, it is at this point because it has had crossovers. There have been media created, so it's a weird gray area. And like I already said that earlier, well, like I was willing to give fucking Teen Titans a mild pass because of Hi Hi Puffy on Ruby doing a theme song. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I think I think Ruby's anime, and I'm just an asshole. Well, if having a manga adaptation makes for an anime, I think there are a whole lot more. Star in anime. Wars. <laughs> I would say Wars uh, is... Jurassic Park. Star Wars is anime. <laughs> It was. Oh, yeah, Star Wars it must Visions. have been influenced by anime, dude. Oh well, let's uh, he was more influenced by uh, Kurosawa and the like. Yeah, I was gonna say, Star- what, what movie was that specific? There's a movie he just the Hidden Fortress. Yeah, I, it, it's sad because that's not one of Kurosawa's like most well-known overseas works. So it kind of becomes a footnote as this is the movie George Lucas ripped off. Well, I mean, <laughs> he, he ripped off a bunch of movies. Let's be honest, there are a bunch of like yeah, World but- War II ones that are probably in there too. Oh, what? Like, I think is it the I'm Dam sure, Busters sure or something all, for that? Uh, yeah, I was say, like, I'm sure we've all seen yeah, exactly. We've all seen the the clips where it's like the actual World War II things or whatever, and then it's like, oh, there's there's the X Wing just doing the exact same motion. By the way, rest in peace. The designer apparently for a lot of the old, the the old school um, ships, the the X Wing, the Y Wing, and so on, um, passed away recently, like a couple mm-hmm. days ago. I just saw that. Oh. I'm like, yeah, um, I. I Unfortunately, people like that don't get named very often, and I'm sorry, I don't remember his name, but yeah, he passed away recently. Um, anyway. Oh, and uh, sorry, I was gonna say, if having a manga adaptation makes an anime, also the Shadow over Insmith, because that has a manga yeah. adaptation that's getting released in English soon. I would like that. This is a, this is a topic I'm not going to de- delve into. Just look it up on your own. But I I, I would like that personally because I'm sure H.P. Lovecraft. I don't know if he was, but I assume he was racist to get Japanese people because that that fucker was just racist into all around. Yeah, definitely, definitely against like Pacific Islander Asian kind oh, yeah, of people. Like, he was a he total was, cultist. So oh, I I would love it. I would love it that if <laughs> it's anime now because it would probably piss him off that he would, that, that that happened. Anyway, it's Frozen a Persona too. It is anime now. Okay, Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> See, uh, but it's funny because I was doing my thing. Like I already mentioned. By the way, I think it's got lost. I was gonna say I kind of prefer dubs now. I was gonna mention that, like you know, here in this topic, that I'm um, um, I'm a lot more open to things being anime because of the way it's like produced. Powerpuff Girls, uh, from what I understand, um. There's a hell of a lot of crossover. Obviously, there's the anime that apparently no one knew about for the longest time. At least I keep seeing that pop up. Like, oh, did you know there was a Power Girl Girls anime? But I remember hearing about that when I was younger. But anyway, um, I don't know. 
my my little my pony friendship is magic is the best anime. It is the best anime. It does you have a Japanese best, dub. Corey and the oh, that's the other thing. Like, uh, when you fucking get like a Disney movie and you give it a Japanese dub, does that make it an, an animated movie? Obviously, does that make it anime? <laughs> Does that it's like, the it's the song of banger? <laughs> like, I mean, I, I there are some like I can't remember off the top of my head. I think I think Minako Honda did like the fucking this an idol like from the eighties. I think she did the whole new world, the one for Aladdin. She wasn't the actress on the the the, the movie, but you know how Disney used to do those singles. Yeah, she was the Japanese single um, vocalist. I think Peebo was still the the, the Japanese English one for Japanese male for some reason, but. Peebo Bryson or whatever his name is. <laughs> he was in the English one. But anyway, anyway, moving on. What's, what's the other one? Uh, oh, oh, by the way, the we didn't quite get that, the localization versus translation. My whole little thing was, it's difficult. <laughs> it's a very open discussion. <laughs> uh, what else is there? Live action anime adaptations. This comes up a lot because I Warren still stands the Cowboy Bebop live action. And I still think that's trash. I think you do too, Josh. I think we, we you were the one I yeah, did no, the I live didn't, review with. I, I didn't like it. Um, I still find it hard to to watch, not because of the actors. It's just a direction because everybody looks good. Everybody's giving it like a like very much it I don't I don't know about vicious, but like everybody is giving it like they're all for it. Like the guy they got for Jekt, like he feels was like a- what I would expect Jekt to be. Um, I feel. Um. Uh, hmm? uh, go ahead. Was JD uh, gonna say something? I was gonna say something, but you were still in the middle of your very top. You're talking about yeah, I, the show. I, I guess just to speed up. Uh, I just really enjoyed the uh, what's it called? I really enjoyed how they put their effort into it because it made the trailers and everything look really nice. But actually watching it showed that clearly this could have needed some more rewrites because it just really felt like they tried to overly connect everything, give screen time more to certain characters that they didn't have to. And yeah, that's, that's why it's a really weird live action. Yeah. It, it would have been... Oh, go ahead. You can go Keep going. Sure. It's not about Cowboy Bebop show. Oh, I was going to say that I think John Cho. Um, yes. Spike. I'll say this to my grave. I love him in other stuff, obviously, but I think he was very miscast as Spike. Uh, and I know this is the most ageist thing I can say. Hashtag boomer me, whatever the uh, command boomer me, whatever. But he was too old for that role. And like him and Jet shouldn't look the same age. And that I really bothered me. That really bothered me. It was like it took it didn't take me out the thing, but it, it just felt like. And he and for the record, you could I've said this in the past. You can look this up. He even said so himself uh, that he felt like he ended up saying that he he did his best and he, you know he 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 rose to the occasion, which I still think he did. I'm not saying you you know, but he even said that he thought he was too old. And if you remember, JD, we talked about this. The show was on hiatus for like months because he injured himself. Yes, yes. And uh, I don't want to say that I was mean, because he was old, but I mean like I believe it was a I stunt gone wrong. Yeah, I wasn't the only one who was saying that though. I mean, I wasn't the one who said that. I'll just leave it at that. It's like, like if it was, it's like if we went with somebody who's still old. He's but, like fifty. And I, no, I mean, no, but I was, I was about to say like if we went with like Keanu Reeves, which was like a lot of people who wanted him to do it, and like just because he's still been very much first in like doing his own stunt work, doing kung fu and stuff like that. I think that that's or martial arts rather than just kung fu, but like I feel that. If they needed somebody who could pass for a, uh, what's it called, Spike, I, I feel that they probably could have gone with uh, Keanu Reeves for it. Since a lot of people, like back before he got too old, they even thought that he would be <laughs> great for the role. He would have been, um, been great for it. it it's sad to me because a lot of times when you see those, those, I, don't, I haven't seen them that often, but you would see like those memes would be all like, oh, this is the best cast for this thing. They'll often pick pictures that don't align to an actual timeline like yeah. they'll pick modern they'll pick actresses and actors from like current different times, time points and all yeah, that suddenly they'll, they'll pick one from the 90s and it's like yeah they're still alive thank god but like 
they're not the same years as ago. they used to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. It's like, oh, but JD, go ahead and mention the other. Yeah, I'll say we're going to talk about like Japanese uh, live action anime adaptations too, because there oh, are some of those that I trash. really enjoy. Hey, the Kenshin I'm ones are gonna... really, really yeah, like, good. Yeah, I've, I've seen the first Kenshin one. That one was good. Uh, my love story has a really good one. Uh, um, I kind of liked As the Gods Will. I, be- I believe that's what it's called. It's like the horror one where they're in a bunch of games put forth by like a god. So many of them are trash. Uh, funny, I'll say just as a, like, a, 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 when I saw the Death Note live action adaptations that I mentioned this in the past uh, that I don't like them, I think. Um, the guy, and it's funny because he's also the guy from Battle Royale. Um, I can't remember his name. The guy who played Kira or, you know, Light. Um, Kira, obviously. Kira, you know, Killer, whatever. But um, he was like in his late 20s and he's one of those people like john cho i still think doesn't look at like in the late 40s like he was in cowboy bebop he's just looked older um but that dude even though he was only in his late 20s he didn't look like he was very young i felt so i guess i'm just ageist all around i kept thinking the whole time like that fucker reminds me of like luke perry in 90210 (laughs) who's like 30 like somebody call the police (laughs) he is not a high schooler (laughs) Yes, can I be oh, any more oh. of a high schooler? <laughs> he reminded me of that. That was the Japanese equivalent oh. of, of that dude in, in Cowboy Bebop. I mean, uh, uh, Death Note. For, like, uh, stage adaptations, too. I, I I like the Death Note musical. Stage adaptations, I, I will never be. I know there was a thing. Holy shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and it was originally written in English and then translated back into Japanese. It's never been performed why? in America. Wait, why? Wait, why? I think they had, like, some thing. Broadway writer no, or something. Exactly. The funny thing about the Death Note musical is that the dad, Light's dad, the dad, Light's dad, um, he's played by the the original Japanese Jesus from Jesus is Christ Superstar. He's also a big actor in other things. So that's the only reason I ever knew about the Death Note musical. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> it's like, he's also the chairman in the, in the Japanese version of Iron Chef. And he's Light's dad. He's in a ton of other shit. But anyway. Uh, I also like the Prince of Tennis musical. Well, at least the first one. I think that's the one I've seen. And the first, like, Prince Tennis live action movie, which used, like, the understudies from the musical. And I've never seen these. Are all Prince of Tennis adaptations musicals? Uh, I don't think uh, Anime ma- is many of the musical. movies were until, like, the new one. Well, the new one's a musical, yeah. Well, yeah, uh, Manuel, I know that. I wrote the review for it. Spoiler, alert, by the way, if you haven't gone. I think it just uh, opened. It's like, in my time. review, Manuel. Yeah. Um, but if anyone wants to, because a friend of mine worked for Eleven Arts and she's been promoting the hell out of that movie, so I think it's still running because I think it just opened on last Friday. Um, Rioma, Prince of Tennis, d- decide is uh, mm-hmm. go look it up. It's theater near you, hopefully. Hopefully, it's yes, I, 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 I have seen the live action um, Prince of Tennis movie, Haro. That's what that's the one I was specifically talking about. What about the Alice game? What is this? Uh, I don't know. We don't have a lot of time. We kind of want to start wrapping it up. Um, uh, actually, uh, sorry, there uh, is one where I didn't really care for the adaptation. Sorry, it's just the like, last one I wanted. Attack on Titan? His internet died. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> Why? Why does that keep happening? We had a lot of people in the chat out of nowhere. There was like a lot of people years. in the chat will destroy JD's internet. That no, I was like, press F for the chat, boys. Press F for the chat. Everyone in chat, press F for JD. Oh, sorry, my internet's fine. Uh, I hit the oh. mute button on my mic. <laughs> we've been, we've been, oh wait, so we we we've been so when did I cut off? Oh my god! So did you notice that we were cu- waxing poetic about you? Yes, being- that, that's why I was like, "Wait, no, my internet's working." And then I just, "Oh, my mic's off." Uh, so when did I stop? Oh, oh Alice in Border- Borderland. Oh, I did like that. I didn't know that was. That's the what they were talking about. Sorry, oh, Manuel. Okay. Where did I cut anyway, off so I can pick up again? Everything you did. You literally started saying what your least favorite were, or what the ones oh, you yeah. didn't like. Oh yeah, the one I didn't like uh, was Bakuman. Uh, just because oh. uh, they so changed. Uh, uh, Nizuma's character to like make him the antagonist of that when he's like their biggest fan in the manga and it's like why why he was my favorite character 
Um, I go rapid fire because these are some, these were the first live action adaptations I think I've seen really on my own. Was the Devil Man one? There was a movie. It's terrible. Um, the Cutie Honey movie is actually okay <laughs> if you like going to guy because I was a huge going. And I still am, I guess. But when I was younger, I collected everything I could for all of them. I have like so many double Devil Man figures because of that. I should sell some of them. But yeah, um, rapid fire. Before we wrap up, let me see what else we're we missing. Uh, we don't need to cover that. Uh, we covered that. Okay, that's it. We covered everything, actually. I, I wanted, if you didn't have time, that's fine. We could do a whole episode on that. And I wanted to talk about buying bootlegs. And the only reason I wanted to bring it up is because um, I used to buy a lot of bootlegs back in the day. And that was just... I think yeah, a lot manual, of when you bought bootlegs, it was out, actual alcohol out of someone's bootleg. <laughs> it was some... Yes. <laughs> I bought the... the... <laughs> No, it's funny. I'll say I'll just say this story real fast. I, there was this um I was cleaning out and I used to have this old resin, like the, the garage kit type figures. I think they're semi-official bootlegs. They were ones that like fans would do or whatever. Um they would basically recast the, the mold out of the figure itself and then make bootlegs from that. Um and I had one, and it turned out that now I somehow own the real figure, and it just blew my mind that like 10 years after I bought the bootleg, I found the figure somewhere at a convention really cheap. And it's a costume figure. Yeah, Big Titty anime, and Big Titty Fighting Game Girl from Dead or Alive. Anyways. Yeah. Apparently, Manuel just watches Big Titty shit, and they're like, idol show yeah. them for children. <laughs> oh, God, I sound terrible. Never mind. <laughs> I well, like, Manuel, you it. are terrible. That's I mean, this is true. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, Alice in Borderlands great. That's t- is that a, was that the Netflix? Yeah, okay. Never mind. I have seen it. Okay, I was make sure because it, it came out around the same time ish, or at least I saw it the same time ish as Squid Game, and they're on very very minorly similar. But everyone on the internet was saying that they're the same show. It's, it's stupid. <laughs> anyway, well, man, um, now you can just cancel all of them because that's kind of racist. No, that, that was the point. Is that it's very racist. <laughs> It was a very racist, like thing yes. That, not, that's why I'm agreeing with you, on, agreeing with him on that one. <laughs> I know it's like once. Cor- well, let's not get into the topic of people who like to just mix Japanese and Korean things all the time because that is a thing for another day. But wrapping it up once again, fanimes this weekend. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, I'll have this episode up a lot sooner than I usually do, just because I don't want to have it up. I have to wait 24 hours no matter what because. Because YouTube, because Twitch technically owns the show, <laughs> otherwise it would be up on YouTube tonight. But uh, uh, Twitch owns the show for twenty four hours. I mean to say, um, but it'll be up sooner. So just watch it while if, if you're watching this, and somehow you can get your ass to Fanime like tomorrow, whenever this goes up, then do it. <laughs> San Jose Convention Center. We'll be at. We'll be doing. Um, fuck. What was it? Idol Anime on Friday. Magical Girls on Sunday, and then um, also Sunday evening. J. Uh, go to our site and go to the. If you're at the convention, that you'll, you'll you'll be able to find it. It's all in one place this year. And Josh, you should go to Fanime. Just go. Uh, I'm probably not going to go. There's like a very high probability I don't go. So if I do show up, it will be completely unplanned. <laughs> but I will say that to everybody who does go, have an absolutely fun time. Stay safe out there. And um, make <laughs> make responsible choices. Pretty oh, much responsible be- choices, but um, yeah, it's more so like we we want to really acknowledge that like we're hopefully in a better spot. But um, I, I wouldn't want anybody to catch COVID. I wouldn't want anybody to get too drunk because I can understand that we're really getting back into cons and stuff. I don't want anybody getting into any like bad shit. Just just go, have a great time, meet up with friends again, and uh, you know, enjoy life. <laughs> um, yeah, are we doing anything else note, this week, Manuel? Uh, yeah, I was gonna say on that note, the streams are done. If you're watching this on YouTube, unfortunately, because of the early upload, it'll be quite a while <laughs> until we have it. Actually, if you our gaming upload will come up tomorrow too, or it'll be up also. But we're not doing any more streams because of anime, and we're not doing UPZ next Tuesday because of anime. Like I'm coming back that morning, so um, that, that's unless I hijack the stream and I mean, post a hijack the pirate episode of <laughs> UPZ. And I don't, I don't think we're doing the Wednesday gaming stream. Not so much because we're not going to do them because Warren's gone. But I think Warren's literally traveling to to Georgia that day. So, oops. So yeah, 
Um, but hopefully we'll be back that weekend and then obviously two weeks from today. So yeah, that's it. Mm-hmm. A shout out to Ed Kenneth, our current patrons. Um, I get to see Ed again for the first time in like three years. It feels it has been three years because the last time I saw him was at Phantom. Yes. Just keep wrapping up. Just keep going. And that's it. Love you all. Thank uh, you for watching. Thank, thank you for talking for joining us. Thank you. Uh, Nyara is watching Top Gun somewhere. She'll review it when she's back. Peace out. Love you all. Good night. Yeah. Bye.